First up, wait a minute. I should have done this. Better. We have two agendas from previous minutes. weeks. Minutes. 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 That we need to approve. So for August 9th, um, I was at the meeting. All right, and I'm not listed. And July 26th. Um, the paragraph under Brent White. Um, it says. The second to last line says the bank will be planted with herbaceous wetland shrubs. So you can't be a shrub in herbaceous. So I think it was herbaceous plugs. Yes, it was. We had plugs and tonight's going to change that. Right, but for this minute, these minutes, it was plugs and woody shrubs, woody wetland shrubs. That is right? correct. Okay. That's it. Anything else anywhere? Mm -mm. That was the that ninth. Was the ninth. Yep. All right. Make a motion to approve those minutes for the ninth. I'll second it. Any other changes? Any objections? All in favor? Aye. 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 Now we have the uh, 26th. There was something on here that I can't find it now. I was going to ask. I know it was this page because it's a little mark up there. You guys are getting way too. Oh, uh, we <laughs> <laughs> we'll make a motion to accept the minutes on the 26th. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Tonight. Which is the 23rd. We have informal gold medals. All right, let's do that right now. I heard about the meeting, Selectman's meeting in gold medals on like Sunday, and the meeting was Thursday. So there wasn't much prep involved in my attending this meeting. And I didn't want, I did not want to be my, by myself the sole person that puts a kibosh on the gold, on the Josh Billings run aground. I passed the buck as far as I could pass it, which wasn't a good thing because Selectman took up on the buck being passed and gave a, a, an approval of gold medals, which gold medals is under the, the Conservation Commission's purview. That's the way it runs. We do, we say what goes on, how it goes on, that type of thing. So we have some mandatories. Tom, you wanna give us a little update on that? You did the research for us. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> just, I just everybody got the, the memo, right? Mm -hmm. That I sent around? Yeah, so, and you know, basically, um, there are very kind of severe limitations on using that metal for anything. To change the use of it, you're supposed to go to the uh, legislature and have both houses of the legislature. You need a majority vote. And uh, you also need a formal approval from the uh, Secretary of um, Environmental Affairs, and he has to pass on it. And uh, failing to consult the Conservation Commission actually violates an amendment to the Massachusetts Constitution. So it's a serious thing. They obviously did not want this used um, for other purposes, like parking 500 cars. And uh, so anyway, but it's never, it never came down to us having to take a vote. No. But mm -hmm. Really, we're, we're the ones who should have taken a vote. The selectmen don't have the power to do that. And, and if there'd been more notice, we might have had time mm -hmm. to do something about it. We could have held a special meeting or whatever, because it would have been up to all of us to decide on this, mm -hmm. not just me. And unfortunately, I had some of the information and I was away and I didn't find out about mm -hmm. it until after it was a done deal, because I would have said, aha, I don't mm -hmm. think so. So but, 
And I would just add, as your select board representative, I only found <laughs> out Thursday at 7 o'clock. So I had less notice than you did. And um, well, it wasn't on the agenda or anything like that. And it just came because the woman, Patty, came to the meeting all upset and anxious. Um, Understandable. And so we, there was no time to research. There was no time to do homework or make calls. For right, it. exactly. So I, we, I felt like we were in an intangible situation. Like you were there and like it was like an emergency. And my husband, my husband's on the executive committee of the Josh, and he didn't know about it. So, you know, this was this was a panic situation. And is this potentially going to be an annual issue? No, no, okay. No, because because we can't. I mean, no, no, no. I mean, is it Tanglewood? Are they on oh, I, I don't, now? I don't know. I don't know what Tanglewood has decided. I know that um, the president of the Josh is our, is our good friend, right? And. Uh, they did not want to use Gould Meadows. They understood that this was not a great idea, and if there was damage, that it would be, it would be expensive to repair, and they wouldn't be able to give their money to the United Way the way they usually do. Um, and so, this was not what they wanted at all. And they were very, very grateful that Tango would rethought the whole thing and 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 came up with with a solution that was workable for everybody for this year. And we'll see what happens in the future. I don't know. We've got 12 months now to it's up to them to figure that out, out. Not, not us. But yeah. part of the reason that I brought this up tonight, even after the fact that it's all straightened out, is this if this happens again, and any of you are on this committee, and I'm not, because I've been here a while now, this probably won't happen next year, but five years from now, you know, everybody kind of forgets things. Mm -hmm. So let it be known, whoever attends the last minute meeting say no well and we can't it, do it put it clearly without, in the minutes yeah. yes so it's that it has too. to be a vote by mm -hmm. the concom and it has to meet any strict requirements that the state has put on this property mm -hmm. and i guess that's due to some interpretation but yeah. because you know, it, it was funded um, in large part i mean by local people but the state actually picked up $200,000 of the original cost under what was called the self-help program. And the whole idea behind that program was to encourage municipalities to set aside conservation land. It was a program in the late 70s. And, you know, people were more into that then. So, uh, the uh, and they were very serious about it, but they had to put up a good hunk of money, you know. The, uh, but it is interesting that they have 80 acres there for $250,000. It was a lot of money back then, though. It, it was, but you know, it's uh, nowadays it would probably cost you more to buy 80 acres there. <laughs> yeah, I would think. <laughs> Thanks for your research. Yeah, well, yeah thank you. Yeah, thank actually, you. that's from that. I, that was from when I was on the board before because we I, I, there was a project of got a list of the town properties, um, you know, property owned by the town. And I went through them to find out which ones we controlled. Mm -hmm. And there was a question as to who controlled Gould Meadows. And I went up to the Register of Deeds and got the copy of the deed here. And uh, they uh, already had that. I just had to dig it up. Okay, I think I do. Okay. Anybody want to look at a copy of the deed? But I was I was in the Adirondacks, so I couldn't find you know I couldn't do anything. To help. All right, and as one of the friends of Gould Meadows, I will try to keep the board more informed of what's happening and what we intend to do and how we intend to do it. There was some question about the mowing of the fields. We mow certain fields because they're too small for the bird the the ground nesting birds to have it. Habitat, habitat for habitat for the ground nesting birds. So those can be mowed. A couple of them have been hayed already. If Gary Johnson cuts it for hay, he doesn't charge us for mowing. So we thought that was a pretty good wash. Um, the town now has a mower. They have a brush hog that can mow the fields. They just bought it uh, by prompting. So if they have time, if they have enough people, 
they will take over mowing the fields. Gary Johnson will not charge us the six thousand dollars that okay. yeah. cost to mow those fields. Well, I reiterate my offer to bounce around on bounce the around on the tractor. <laughs> <laughs> But I will see. I don't think that, but you never know. Okay, so we'll keep everybody informed. Have any questions about gold medals? Hear people talking about it. Bring them in. We'll talk about it. Or just call me and I'll let you know what I know. Okay. Right. You guys are interested. This is the uh, public hearing. Uh, Bernard Hahn, 16 Beechwood. No. Bone Camp. No tree replanting. Dave and uh, what we can do to dispose of it. Have, have you been introduced? This is Dave Cameron of uh, Fleetwood, our consultants, hmm. formerly of DEP. Um, nice to meet you. Some and of you look familiar. I think we met up at the site yes. three years ago. Yes. Yeah, Wheatley Drive. Very good. Which they they just abandoned. It, it was bizarre. We went through this. We went through this whole thing where they appealed the, the, our decision, and DEP came back with another with their their revision of our decision, which actually was great. Um, and uh, and then they just that? yeah left and bought a condo or something. I don't know. Anyway, it was bizarre. <laughs> It's all right, worked out. Now we we'll get the town to buy that property. Kate is there. asking if we're taking questions. Kate, where are you? I didn't see her. Hi, I'm over here on Zoom. Hi, Kate. Okay. I do. I, I, I don't mean to interrupt, but since David is, Cameron is there, once you guys have um, finished talking to him a little bit, I did have a question for the board about the two new David and the other DEP um, staff. Yeah, so once you're finished with whatever you're talking about now, I do have a, a question that I wanted to ask that relates to their coming on board. Okay. All right, we'll squeak you in here somewhere. Thank you. Um, nothing on that then. Did we send you? Probably not. No. It's not a. Not from Beachwood. No. I don't remember seeing it. We are just awaiting a plan for tree replanting. Okay. For a very long time. Which we've been waiting for for a very long time. And the and for the first one, it is a resolution of violation where they were supposed to be doing some replanting. We've gone out there, I don't know how many times to look at it. The planting has been done sort of in some places and they were asked to um, to increase the uh, plantings along the bank by just stopping the mowing. And that hasn't really happened. So we're, that's, still, that's still riding. Um, so I think our question there was, how long do we wait and what action can we start to take? Because these have been on the agenda for, a long time. for probably a year, <laughs> been on for a long time. Uh, so have, did you, I guess the first question I would ask is, did you issue in writing very clear directives in terms of what they needed to do to respond to the enforcement order? Well, it was at the time, yes. You know, I'd be happy to take a look at the enforcement orders. Okay. I probably should do that before I you know, render any opinions. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. So I spoke to um, I spoke to Jeff Lynch. This is for for Annie Selke. I spoke to Jeff Lynch, and um, I got a uh, an email from Annie um, specifying which property is which, and Jeff is going to write up something to help us do this certificate of compliance the the question on it is that in the process of this this she she received an enforcement order under the scenic mountain acts for for clear cutting her hill and she um, subsequently planted an orchard of a hundred apple trees which we accepted as being okay and um then she divided the property in anticipation of building a house on one section of the property. 
since that happened. So that confused the to how to how to issue the enforce the certificate of compliance because the property is now in essence a different property. In case you're wondering why this is so confusing. So that's the why it is. But anyway, so we're gonna get we're gonna get something from Jeff Lynch, the lawyer, who's going to give us some guidance as to how we can write the certificate of compliance so that it's properly attached to the right property. And did they totally pull out of their other plans for yes. building the house? Yep. Okay. They did. They're gonna they're gonna convert the barn, it's my understanding, which is in Lennox. Oh, that's the other thing, half the properties, part of the properties in Lennox, parts in Stockbridge. How the whole thing got screwed up to begin with. So yeah. Just wasn't good, it hasn't gotten better. All right. Um, notice of intent, 38 Lake Drive. Well, good evening, Commissioners. Brent White from White Engineering for your record. On behalf of the applicant, I would like to start this evening by acknowledging again, uh, Mr. Cameron here from Fleetwood. Um, I'd like to thank him and you all for expediting the review. Um, I know at the last meeting, it was that, that meeting that I discovered a review was even being conducted. And I appreciate the, the quick turnaround on the comments and the opportunity for us to be able to respond to that, which uh, we have before you this evening and hard copies for uh, your record and really the um, to try and to keep it brief here the biggest changes that we, we made here uh, first off was we added to our plants uh, just a planting sheet uh, it, while it's a small property there's a lot of detail that we're trying to call out between the house the drainage the septic uh, what have you here so we just broke out a separate planting plan to help better uh, more clearly identify all of the people I gave him one already oh, okay. All right. okay so Step one was just to help try and take give that its own individual sheet. Uh, the second was we just identified each planting area with a specific number. We had initially some planting areas and some we referred to as a buffer strip, the wet, wetland replanting. And we just gave each planting area its own specific number with an itemized list. And then as a part of that process, we incorporated feedback that we were beginning to discuss as a potential condition that was um, uh, further addressed in the review here with respect to the plantings along the waterfront. So what we've done is we've showed the four woody shrubs in this planting area and the 16 remaining shrubs or uh, proposed shrubs to provide the total 20 uh, that was referenced in, in the report here. And we just thought, um, understanding how important those were to uh, the, the, the enhancement of the buffer here that we would identify the shrubs with their own individual symbol um, in the, the planting areas themselves. Uh, some of the other items I would say were more clerical that we were able to uh, to clarify on the plans. And the last thing that I would just say as a part of my presentation was uh, the three suggested special conditions that were in the report that you had received last week. Um, I see no, had no opposition or would suggest that you incorporate those. Um, they're fairly consistent with other conditions this commission has set, so. So instead of the herbaceous plugs? These that is correct. We reduced the number of, of plugs to put shrubs in this area here, yep. more okay. shrubs in this area as well, and we called them right out on the plan. So right. uh, it was easier to see that there was no question as to what was being done. We also left a, a stone edge along this planting area too. I know one of the, I think the shrubs helped to address the comment, but just having that will prevent the lawnmower from creeping in or, or taking away from uh, the efforts we're making in that area. Right. Questions? Oh, I think it's great. Yeah, no, I think that's a good change. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I never saw any copy of the peer review. Should we have seen that? Um, I, think I, I think I, I forwarded it to this, everybody. I, I brought a copy if you want to read it. I didn't. I just printed I didn't this out tonight. So. Yeah, my copy. Is it? When was it emailed? Because I. I didn't get it. Yeah, I didn't get it. This afternoon, email. last Thursday, I think it was sent out. That was, that was Thursday, and then uh, we had a full schedule on Friday. But yesterday, we had a chance to review the plans, and then really a chance this morning, just as getting ready for the presentation here, I realized the shrubs were the biggest point of discussion at, at our, our last meeting and emphasizing the report. We just thought uh, a chance to make it as crystal clear as we possibly could. We would take the chance uh, to do so. Done. So you received that electronically. You have the hard copies, and all other elements of the products uh, remain the same. We didn't 
change any other impervious areas or septic. I'll, everything remained the same. We just really emphasized clarifying that the additional shrubs would be in that area and then just a more clear uh, identification of each of the different planting areas throughout the site. So I appreciate all the changes you have made since you brought this to us initially, you know, making it a little smaller. It's, it's better. Doing time. the planting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it is. Well, you know, I, admittedly, we, we struggle. Obviously, there's, uh, you know, we want to make sure all the information is on the record here and consolidate as many sheets as we can here. But I think for uh, the sensitivity of the site here, um, I think on future matters like this, we'll just make sure we have a separate planting plan and make it easier for everyone to review, weigh in on, and mm -hmm. implement. When does this start? Yeah. Have they started anything at all? We, um, so at this point here, so we have filed our Lake Compound Overlay District Special Permit. It's my understanding we have a site visit scheduled for September 13th and a public hearing on October 4th. And the select board, we are going to be on their agenda for September 22nd. So uh, we will be essentially counting down days once a, a, a decision is recorded, our appeal period is up, we intend to uh, mobilize as quickly as possible. So you'll certainly be receiving notification, I imagine, sometime in November that uh, site preparation for demolition will, will be commencing. And once we know more, we're happy to communicate that to you all. Well, I make a motion we close the hearing. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. 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 Thank you all. Thank you, Brian. your time. Have a great evening. That was a, that was a great job. Thank you so much. Okay. Eight Meadow Road. We went there. Pond. I don't That's my comment. Can I ask a question? Sure. Does that mean it's approved by us that we're moving forward? Yes. yes. Okay, so we close the public hearing. And yes, it's done. We're done. Thank you. Unless there's an appeal of some kind. But if someone, you know, says nay, then probably go into discussion. No, but I, my understanding, I sort of missed it. Um, I was stuck in town. Do we want to just close it? Do we yeah. need any information? Any discussion on 8 Meadow <laughs> Road? Road or lane? Road. Just be lane. Right. No, it was pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. Really straightforward. I'm going to put a pool in. It's already long. Yep. Yeah. A little close, but. It, well, 80 feet yeah. from, the, from the resource area. So I, I was okay with it. Do you want to make, a uh, make a motion to close? I'll make a motion to close it. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Elizabeth Strand, 12 Lirriwa Crossroad. Anyone? No. Foresight? Nobody from Foresight on the. And this is the one we were going to ask for a peer review, right? We'll talk about a peer review. Yes. Wasn't Jackson pre presenting that? Yeah, this is an ANRAD. So um, we had asked if, if um, Fleetwood would re review it. We have their contract, uh, which I gave you. No. No. Sure. Sure. What was it? Yes, it was. That was this it. This is it. That was it. Contract. So, right. um, did we want it? We would need to vote to approve. Oh, I don't want to. We wanted a peer review on this. Right. right. Exactly. I don't want to see no, it. We'll to, approve to, approve to approve the, the, peer, the review. peer review. Mm -hmm. The peer review. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. We're not going there yet. Okay. We're going to have, have it looked at in case we miss something. So All this right. is their this is their contract. Um, they the scope of work. Uh, so it would be twenty eight hundred dollars to um, to look at this project. 
plus if anything comes up or anything changes. And it's 12 acres, so it's a, you know, it's a fairly significant size. Sally, did, uh, did uh, Foresight provide any uh, field reports that Ann read? I don't think so. Yeah, okay. I don't think they did. I think you and I talked about it. Yeah, I don't think they did. The property is. Um, yeah, it's well, oh, that's just well, I think it's right by the BB. It's right off Prospect Hill Road. There's a, like a garage, a like driveway with a garage. As you went down from Prospect Hill, and this is all that. Street. Yeah. So this was. This was attached to the. Street that comes across from like the This property was owned by um, Richard Brown at one point who owns the house that's just south on the right, the Tiffany house. It was owned by Mr. Tiffany, in case anybody's interested. Uh, <laughs> Tiffany and Cole? That would be Mr. Mr. Tiffany. Yep. Oh, no wonder he owns acreage. And, no, with Richard is not Mr. Tiffany. The person who built the house was Mr. Tiffany. Um, <clears throat> So I mean, we have these. We have these and the plans. Is that what you want? Is that what you're looking at? You yeah, I, I know. With with past projects, sometimes they send like you know copies of their logs and such. They did not. That is it. They just it was yeah, I saw the notice of intent with the plans yeah. that they attached. What makes an ANRAD different from other businesses? I don't know. It's, um, because we are we are determining the air the resource area. We we don't necessarily do that with every other one. There's a checkbox that you can check off that says whether you have confirmed the resource area as determined in the um, in the application, but, which we rarely do um, unless they specifically ask us that we are determining specifically where the wetlands are, or where any resources are. And, and as I understand it, originally there was, um, and you could correct me on this, the uh, determination of uh, applicability, people were kind of abusing it because they were sending in um, very large projects that had all of this resource delineation, but there's no, there's nowhere near the fees. I don't think there's any fee for a request for determination of applicability. There is. Well, there's a town fee. Right, a town fee. But so basically the commission was doing all of this work on large pieces of land um, without really adequate compensation so that um, they pushed for the uh, abbreviated, I always have to think about that. There's some resource area delineation. Yes, and and red. And red. It's easier to just say and red. Yeah, I think it, I think it also predated Mass General Law fifty three. That's the peer review one. I think it predated that. So mm -hmm. it was the only mechanism at that time to keep applicants who say wanted to develop a three hundred acre parcel and turn it into a subdivision and hang a thousand flags and then just dump it on the commission's desk and say, Have at it, we want you to confirm or which they did with the DeSisto property. We went out and spent hours and hours and hours walking around the DeSisto. Doesn't it fix it for three property. years total? Yeah. Right. I believe the fee charges per linear foot or something, so that was the way to capture some of the. Some with the changing weather, right. another. Here so the question before us is whether we approve Fleetwood doing a peer review? Yes. Yes. So I, um, go ahead. I, I would certainly be in favor of that. I we have put, to make a motion. But we, I just also want to make sure that um, the applicant is still interested in doing it. It's, it's surprising they're not here. She's usually here. So if we make a motion, I would just say pending confirmation that they're still they still want this to happen. So have we had a site visit at that one? I would, not yet. You gotta look. Yeah. No, we, we do. Have, we we will yeah. have to take a look. But if, if Fleetwood is looking at it, we might want to follow them around. <laughs> Good idea. Yeah. 
and we'd learn something and maybe we'd know something too you never know <laughs> yeah you could go first and get the ticks out of the way <laughs> good plan it's in the contract right? yeah this one, doesn't it say tick removal <laughs> so i would make a motion that uh, we hire fleetwood to do a peer review for 12 larry wog crossword pending confirmation that the applicant still wants to uh, proceed with this. So we'll have to contact Foresight. Yeah. I'll make a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So we will now, let the, you know. the fees have already been appropriated by the town. We have a set. Right. right. I remember that. Was that. This is coming out of our pocket right away. It's already out of our pocket. So we go on the site visit. They always send us confirming quick. where the wetlands are and are not. Yes. They are. Yes. Right. And we're following the lead that we know where these things are. They've got to give us some sort of drawing. Right. And before all this was happening and after you guys were doing it so now we force them to bring in an engineer for them to mark it mark out the uh well they've already the marked it out i think they have they have, would have yeah. had the wetland resources in the plans okay yeah and well, uh, I, we are confirming their um what they state are the wetland resources is there ever any debate or it's pretty clean it's pretty well we can debate yeah. much. We can debate we've moved we've moved lines before mm -hmm and and discovered resource areas that weren't on plans mm -hmm. i mean the the desisto the desisto site visit which took us hours mm -hmm. to do it's what 400 acres i forget how big it is it's huge it was one of the original um cottages from um from the great the golden kind of era true. and so it's this this huge piece of property that had um it was a school it had um all kinds of buildings and stuff and it also goes up the mount up lennox mountain so we not only had the scenic mountains on the top of that but we had a lot of really squirrely um wetland things there were streams that went underground came back up again and it was it was very complicated 400 acres that sounds like a couple of weeks actually yeah so um should that come before us again guess who's going to get to come with us because <laughs> that's it we did have we did have a consultant at the time um who went with us terry euchre did you know her i'm not i, I know the name yeah sure she went out with us and uh and helped us review it but it was it was a big project yeah. God, I remembered her name. Good. Alzheimer's has not struck yet. <laughs> Short term memory. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> we did a book. Okay. Trouble. <laughs> what do we have next? Uh, so did, is this a good time to let Kate ask? Uh, yeah, Kate. Kate, you still with us? Kate? I am. I am here. All um, right. So my question is I'm really glad David's here. Hi, David. Hi. And um, so within the, the Lake and Pond Overlay District bylaw and the press requests we're getting, increasingly we are seeing requests that include walls. And they can be anything from, um, you know, a dry laid stone wall to what looks like an Atlantic wall breaker to something that is made out of ready rock and looks like something you would see along the Mass Pike heading into, into Boston. So I think it would be helpful to have some guidelines on how we should think about these walls within the LPOD and the riparian zone, um, you know, from the standpoint of the Wetlands Protection Act, Habitat, um, Clean Water Act, Stormwater Runoff, anything else. So I guess my question is, will, will David and or Mark be reviewing all the Lake and Pond Overlay District requests? And uh, would it be possible, sometimes there's this timing thing where CONCOM goes after planning board 
but it would be great to have some some standards or guidelines that we could use in thinking about these requests. So just, I want to make sure I'm clear. So currently the LPOD is administered through the planning board? The planning board, but because it um, falls within CONCOM's jurisdiction, CONCOM is reviewing as well with a notice of intent. If they overlap. If they, overlap. Yep, they overlap as well as overlapping with the select board. Do they always overlap? Do resource areas and LBOD always overlap? Pretty much, I would think. Lake and Pond Overlay District is is the Housatonic River, the um, Stockbridge Bowl, Lake Averick, and so and it does not those. always, it's not always, but most of the time. Is it? I don't think there's a buffer. Is it 100, is it just 150 feet? There yeah, is okay. one, so 150. It's 100, so it's a, if it's 150 feet, and it doesn't intersect with bordering land subject to flooding or bordering vegetative wetlands, it may, a portion of the LPOD may be beyond the CONCOM's jurisdiction. Except we have 200 feet under our under local bylaw. Local bylaw. Oh, okay. It's 200. 200 off of every resource area? No, only certain, only certain. Yeah, only water certain. Bodies. Okay. Yeah. Water bodies. Water bodies. Water bodies. Yeah. So David, the bulk of the planning board's work um, falls under the Lake and Pond Overlay District by law at Stockbridge Bowl. So that's usually what I'm thinking about because we get a lot of teardown requests. And that's where the walls often come into play. You know, you've got in part, on some parts of the lake sort of a steep geography there. So a wall becomes a retaining wall and it's changing the slope, right? So is, the, is one of the primary concerns about the walls, you're concerned about the structural integrity from an engineering standpoint, and you're afraid they'll, they'll collapse? What are some of, I guess, what are some of the concerns associated with the walls? Um, my concerns have to do with um, habitat access to the shoreline, that riparian zone, um, as well as, stormwater runoff, you know, how they interact with the land. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It does. So, so there are actually some performance standards for certain resource areas that if um, the if the impacts within a certain resource area that the commission is taking a look at are exceeded, then one actually the can actually has to do a wildlife habitat evaluation. And if the wall, if there's a wall um, that's proposed as part of a specific project that triggers the need for wildlife habitat evaluation, then that wall can be certainly part of that evaluation. You know, for instance, is this wall going to be a barrier to wildlife from getting from habitat in the uplands down to Stockbridge Bowl or Pusatonic River? So certainly that can be part of part of the evaluation. And Kate, to add to that, can I? We haven't. But we, have, we don't have our new performance standards approved yet, but this is included in the CONCOM's new performance standards, that if there's a barrier, a fence or any barrier to wildlife, then we can comment on that and we can you know, say what we think if we think that it is impeding migration or movement. So we have included it in our new performance standards. Okay, so you know, for, for we just reviewed um, 36, Lake Drive. And first of all, it's a lower wall. It's about two and a half to three feet, but it's a 40 foot long wall. So, you know, it would have been helpful for me to know, I did flip through the conservation um, information at the back of the application. It came from, from White Engineering, but it would have been really helpful for me to have um, a little bit more information on that wall, you know, from someone other than the applicants. Did we see that? Did we see the wall for 36? 36 38. 38. 36. Uh, David, there's two properties that are in the works, 36. They're side by side and yeah. it's and I don't, hard to divide. I don't remember a wall being. Since a I've been on the Conservation Commission, I haven't seen that. Yes, you have. That wall? I don't remember a wall. I don't remember a wall there. Yeah, there was a, there's a wall. There's, there's a box. Part of the project. It's a 40-foot wall, and it's it's 
umbrella. It's illustrated on their planting plan for 36 Lake There's Drive. Elevation right around the house. Because they had to raise the whole house up. Right. But we didn't let them go all the way to the water. Right. So there's a, a step. Hey, how, how tall did you say it was? Two and a half to three feet. It varies, Shannon said. Shannon presented. I don't, I don't recall the, the height, but that seems... It's so it, started, it starts at the... It kind of starts at where the septic. They're putting in a new septic, right? Yeah. So it starts in that vicinity, and then it just sort of makes it... It runs parallel to the shoreline. I mean, more or less. You know, this shoreline is a little bit jagged, but it runs parallel to the shoreline, which... Um, you know, kind of runs, and then it runs along the front of the house. So the topography is being changed because um, currently it slopes down. And now, you know, with a wall, and it is a low wall, but now you're going to have, you're, you're basically creating a terrace there. And I've seen a fair amount of that around the lake. So, you know, it would be helpful for me to have, um, if it's a situation where, unfortunately, the CONCOM has not reviewed something be um, before the planning board has, it would be helpful to have some some guidelines and in, in terms of how to think about these walls. Yeah, I, I've already got some thoughts, so okay. I'd be happy to talk to, to you, you know, with the permission of get that something yeah. yeah. caucus between the two boards. I have enough yeah. thoughts here too, if you want. Well, Joe yeah. wanted yeah. that. Huh? I'll send it to them. Um, there's tremendous pressure to build walls because then the land can be just all lawn right up to the shore. Right. And so that's we have been did. fighting this for many years. I can remember quite a few. And uh, what informally we've been doing, Sally, remember, we, we asked for a, a natural looking uh, border. And so if there was a six foot high wall for an extreme example, we would step it up three, two feet maybe, and then a, a shelf that could be planted with like dogwoods or something, you know, the, and then another shelf. And it's, it's you know, the, it's maybe even as much as 10 feet back for a big high wall. They would, you know, they would lose to having it lawn. But it, the, the, the idea though is, also aesthetics. I mean, if, you, if you're out on a boat and you look at 40 feet of one kind of wall, then, you know, 60 feet of another kind, and then this one over here uses Legos or whatever they use, you know? And, exactly. Yeah, I mean, so that's a huge aesthetic uh, piece there. Yeah. But it also goes right along with migration of, uh, you know. Sure, I mean, so I think as a general guideline, if you've got a site that, that has, say, 40 or 50 feet of um, upland between existing structure and Stockbridge Bowl, we use Stockbridge Bowl as an example. Yep. There's no wall there now. And, you're, and an applicant proposes to put a significant wall Thank very you. close to Stockbridge Bowl. Yep. It's very difficult to demonstrate that that's not going to be an impediment to at least some kind of wildlife. I would agree. It doesn't mean that you can necessarily okay. deny it, but you have to look at things on a very case by case. David, can you speak? Up? I'm having trouble hearing you. Can you speak just a little out higher? Um, I, I was saying that, and generally speaking, if you're looking at a site. I heard what you said, just going forward. If you're going to put a vertical wall close to the water's edge where there's no wall at all now, it's difficult to demonstrate that that's not going to have an effect on some kind of wildlife. Turtles are a perfect example, right? Because they come out of the water. Right. So most of the time in the water, they come out of the water and they, they make their nests and they lay their eggs in generally nice, well-drained, sandy soils that are in the uplands. Well, if there's a wall two feet from the edge of the shore, they, they simply <laughs> <laughs> have that. Let it go. <laughs> That's just, I'm just giving you one example of, of you know, how I would look at that as a buffer zone impact or a riverfront area impact or a borderland subject to the flooding impact. And the commission for sure has, has the ability to review and take those types of things into consideration. Okay, that's, that's great news. Um, you know, I don't know if it was made clear in the 36 Lake 
drive application that there was a 40 foot wall. Um, but there was. <laughs> one of the other things, one of the other challenges of it is that if it's only in the buffer zone, but you see, you've got you've got much more you've got much more leeway and leverage given your local bylaws. Mm -hmm. you really, we have buffer zone protection. Yeah, you, yeah. You have, I think you have a lot more flexibility to do things that you can't do under the Wildlife Protection Act. So we should yeah, we should talk about it. Thank we you. Have, Thank we you. We have an aesthetic component. It's interesting. Do you have that yep. in the bylaw? Yes, it's in the No, not bylaw. really. It's, it's in, the, uh, in the zoning bylaw. The aesthetic component is most definitely there. We've had, we've not had good luck with upholding the aesthetic. Yeah, that's so subjective, I think, uh, the courts. But uh, actually, you know. Sally, just to end this, I mean, we've had fairly good luck convincing people in the discussion. Yeah, we tried. That it's right. to their advantage right. to have it native looking and and working natively too. We're talking about and they come in with a turtles. front yard full of invasives. Oh, wow, that's a big one. Pollinator gardens for the grandchildren. <laughs> and we if they ask to do whatever for their front of their property, they take the invasives out, we have them plant native species. So that's a plus for them and us, they get it to look a little better yeah. rather than this big massive tangle of yep. Yep. whatever it's a, it's and everything. It's a solution. And we so remind we also, that the geese don't like it. And the geese, that's what I was going to say that. That's Yeah, it's a, what, the, the geese good or bad. You know, it's, <laughs> we have yes. good. it's right here. <laughs> I think they're good. Yeah, it depends on how you look at it. You look at it from a wetness protection perspective. You know, that's yeah. one of the things that it's supposed to be protecting is yeah. Sure, how did that for ducks and geese? David, he's got the answer. Oh, I trained my puppy to chase the geese and blood <laughs> <laughs> it. The trouble is, it's, it's too much of a good year. Geese are a attracted to mode water because they can fly away and they're protected they, they will not walk through woods and they won't no they won't walk through woods they won't walk through thick brush yeah, to get to this grass yeah, they, they either can fly to it or they don't go near it yeah. so if you don't give them enough landing and takeoff area your lawn's fine okay that's it now we have rda is a sign i stuck to sign and the uh we got a thing from J. Ryan Builders stating that he's the general contractor for Aid Hawthorne, conformed to the order of conditions provided on the WPA Form 5, Mass DEP 25. So we got the thing from the contractor. Okay. Probably the first time we've ever actually well, got one. Well, he used to be one of us. So. You know, that was interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I have been asked as the um, new representative of the Stockbridge Bowl Stewardship Committee to see if we would be interested in when they finish the final document for the lake management, if we would be interested in having Fleetwood look at it. Yeah, I'm interested. Who's paying for it? So, well, that <laughs> would be the question, but I'll check into it. Okay, because it seems from from what I've seen of it, it would be good to have you guys. This is my actually my suggestion, because it's a really comprehensive document about the lake management and and how we look at sort of the whole right. picture. To have you guys do a quick run through from with from a DEP mindset. Like, are there things that are in it that probably are going to have red flags, or are there things in it that might um, that might be better stated in a different way, so as to make them sort of go whoosh, right through the process when the time comes? And this it's a big document. Is, did um, Ken Wagner prepare it? No, we we are preparing it ourselves. Oh, okay, the Yeah, yeah. 
Well, GZA is what it's doing it for us. And the only reason I ask who's paying it, paying for it is our budget. This is our first year. We don't know where mm -hmm. our budget's going to go. If, if we have money left over, then this has been a great way to use it. But we don't know that yet. Right. We've right. got eight months to open. So yes. will we have a sense of a running tab? Yes. So, no. Yeah, it's, it's a finite amount per yep. year, um, yep. whether you use it or not. So I would encourage you to use it. You can use every penny. Exactly. So you say it doesn't carry from quarter to quarter? Uh, no, it does not. But we can we can we can work around. I think we can work around that. Um, so you, I, I want you guys to get hours of work for every. Dollar. So typically, it slows down in the next four months. Well, that, that's what I, you actually read my mind. I was going to say, do you guys typically have because these are three month um, quarters, and so the first quarter that we've been on is going to end at the end of next month, right? So July, August, September. Um, so then you have two, almost two full quarters of really like winter time. And I get what is, I don't have a sense on how many filings you get in the winter and how much um, assistance you need. But if you don't and you want to earmark some of those dollars to do this, that might, you know, that would work. Same as our performance standards. Copy that. Wait. The performance yeah, standards are with Donna at the moment. Oh, they yeah. are? Okay. Yeah, we got them back. Did you the other thing, them back? Keep in mind, too, this no. may go without saying, it may be obvious, but like for this 12 Larry Waterway thing, that's being conducted separately. So that would be done under Mass General Law 53, yep. which means that the applicant would pay would for pay that. For so it. That doesn't take away oh, from great. Great. the kind of hodgepodge of support we're giving you guys on all these various projects. Okay, great. Thank you. That's helpful. Um, uh, Keep in contact with Canalis and we'll see how. But I agree, we should use. I mean, yeah. We should use it if the money's put aside. Yeah, and I thought you know I Sally didn't explore, Ron didn't explicitly ask me to come out here tonight, but I think you'd like you know we we need to make some connections here and you know keep working together. So I, I thought it made sense to come out. Plus, we're, I was reviewing thirty eight. We were going to talk about Larry Way, but. I mean, if the commission wants, I can plan on coming out every hearing. It's what every other every two weeks. Every two weeks well, it's the second and fourth Tuesday of the month, which is usually every two weeks, but there are always those weird ones where it's three weeks and then I get totally confused. So if there's something really, really simple and only a couple of agenda items that doesn't make sense for you to come out, yeah. and then we reserve that, those ones. We're busy. These probably make sense to come out. Yeah. No, it's, it's good to have you here. Where are we with this? They just gave me that for the demo for four cold Oh, I don't know. We've already passed that. Yeah, I don't so know why it was separate. I don't know. They're just they're just doing it's a duplication. Know. Yeah, it is pretty much. Toss it back. What is this East Main Street? We just got that. It's a jurisdiction. All right. Take a run down. We, I got one. I picked one up yesterday for eight Larry Wog. It's an addition on the house. It's on the high and dry side. If it was on the other side, we'd definitely have to go look at it. But it's parts in the way, so I just signed a, signed okay. off on it. But if you see anything going on there, That's anybody goes down Larry Wog, it's on the west side of the house addition. So west. East. Performance standards are with Donna. The performance standards are with Donna at the moment. Okay. Sally, speaking of Donna, did she ever respond to the document I sent you uh, on the uh, subject of uh, special permit granting authorities? No, she did not. She hasn't responded. No. To that. Do you know who she is? Who we're Donna talking about? Brewer is our She's town council. Yeah. She did. She has them. I'll have to. I'll have to prod her a little bit. And and if she sits on the performance standards too long, if we yeah, because last time it was a very long time. Yeah, yeah. So I'll prod her for that too. Okay. We're to the point where we're going to sign off on things. If you want to watch us sign, that's great. <laughs> sure. 
Thanks for coming out. Well, thank you for yeah, Thank you. Yeah. Actually, I do have one suggestion. Yes. If something came up tonight. If you want, if you, um, and it may be saving time to Sally, if you get me the email addresses of all the members, if I issue a deliverable or a order or proposal, everyone can just great. automatically be on that list. If right. you're okay with that, then. If it, I think if it, I think if it goes to Conservation Commission at Stockbridge dash MA dot gov, which is our new, which may be a problem, which is why our, I'm not sure. I think that that's a. I think it is. That's a good email. It should go to everybody. But when I send something out, and I'll send, I'll send you that, Dave. Uh, with with, um, uh, it'll just be a. You know, I'll put in the thing test or something. Um, it will have not only everybody's town addresses, but their personal addresses, because some people have trouble accessing the town email. So I, I know that some of the emails I've sent went specifically to that general conservation. It should issue. go to every. And I didn't. Anybody? Do. I didn't get it. Yeah, I didn't get it. I did it. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know that I sent. I didn't send it. Larry Wog. Larry Wog, sorry. Oh, okay. I believe I sent the report for 38 Lake Drive to that address, so nobody got it. That means it's going to work. There we go. Okay. All right. Well, I'll make sure. I'll make sure to forward again um, thing to the list I have, and and I'll make sure you have that because that's everybody's personal, as well as their. Yep. That would be great. Yeah. Um, upcoming. Lisa, Jamie, Tom, Joe, Chuck, Bill. Nice to meet you. Oh, those little. We used to have them. Yeah, yeah we do. Them. We have them. We have the. Not for everybody, though. We'll have no, to get them for everybody. I was going to say, I haven't seen the signs out since I came. But we still had yours from before. I know you didn't throw it out. We knew you were coming back. <laughs> was down there with George Shippies. Yeah. God rest his soul. Yeah. Mm. Um, yep, I have, we have a gallery. We have Louise. You have Louise there. Right. We'll let you take that one home if you want. To. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, tree protection bylaw. What, what do we know about that? Where did so, that... Right, good night. I'm thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm on the Forestry Agriculture Forestry Commission. Matt Boudreaux contacted you a long time, a long ago, time ago. Long time ago. To try to have a joint Forestry Conservation Commission meeting to talk about the possibility of a tree bylaw. Mm -hmm. um, I do see a ribbon around a dead elm tree across yeah, the street. That's the tree warden. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. That's a very dead elm. We're pretty yeah. close to it. We'll be yeah. by. Yeah, it's dying. So, you know, that was from a long time ago. I can ask Matt if it's something we're still interested in right. and get yeah. back to you. I think it would be really interesting. Yeah. Oh, uh, we're we're meeting, I mean, we have, we have woolly adelgid in our hemlocks. Yeah. Lots of towns have tree bylaws, but I really the case, they have major ones. They, they have major ones. Yep. So what does that mean? A, a tree bylaw? What are we trying to accomplish? Well, oh, some okay. of them, we did one in Great Barrington. They they have um, a lot of what they do is have guidelines for protection mm -hmm. trees, especially around like construction sites mm -hmm. that you have to you know have a space around the tree to. So that it doesn't get hit by right, right. You know, it's, it's things along those lines. Right. Some of them have um, included in it if a town tree comes down, it has to be replaced, those kind of things. Mm -hmm. We looked at a lot of samples, and because so much we see we have so many tree issues on the conservation commission, it just came up at the forestry meeting that maybe it's something we want to talk about together. We also have a scenic tree law or scenic streets, I think it's called. Scenic roads. Scenic roads? Every single road, right? Which means. Well, there's 11 roads mm -hmm. that are designated as. They're all roads. charming. They're very charming. They're all lovely. <laughs> Maybe a little piece, but they're yeah. charming. You can't cut a tree down. It includes rattlesnake, just in case. Uh, having a hearing with the tree warden and the planning board, right? Okay. So it, actually, sometimes it, the law says, you know, separate hearings but they do allow you to join them and um, 
if you alter a, a, a wall or a tree on one of those 11 roads. Mackinac Road is one of them, but the trees you guys went to look at not long ago, they weren't on the road, so they didn't qualify. Now, Tanglewood at one point took down a whole... A whole hedgerow. Yeah, a whole hedgerow of hemlocks, and uh, really, they should have been fined on every tree, but they weren't. They, uh, anyway, speaking of Tanglewood, <laughs> anyway, but it's it's a law always to be aware of that. The Where did you get the eleven? You know, if, if the gas line, if they're going to run a gas line down the street, what, what, what's the damage to the trees? Three or something. Does it, it deal with the other side? Uh, Does it deal with disease? Bylaws. Like, for example, my neighbor. It's not law, but all kinds of dead trees on it. Bylaws. If you want, I'll send you. I mean, is that something where they yeah. should be taking them down so it doesn't no. disease does not spread? No, it's too late. Jim. Well, you can. I mean, you can contact the tree wood to take a look yeah. at it. That's that's not. Uh, oh, well, he, he brings my wood all the time, so. Okay. I'll, I'll yeah, ask, ask him. Yeah, I mean that's, that's more of a tree warden issue. But if, if it's not on the tree warden doesn't have any authority if it's not on the town right away. Right. 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 Yeah, if it's, it's on be a somebody tree. else's property, I yeah, mean, it's got to be a town tree. Right. You're on your own. Really. Lisa, is it still where possible? I'm sorry. Is is your language in this proposal still where possible? We don't have any language yet. This is very preliminary for the tree bylaw. For the tree bylaw, no, we don't have any language. This is, they, is the idea to have it where possible. Then, to have it what do you think? What are you thinking? I'm sorry, I don't understand the question. There are situations, remember we discussed this, where it's absolutely impossible. Impossible. To replace trees. Oh, yeah, where possible. So where possible. That's yeah, right. or at a different site. You know, that's what Ben and Great Barrington, sometimes a, a tree would come down in one place and they'd plant it. They'd plant another so tree. not where possible, right? Where possible. And where not possible, then it could go somewhere else. Plantings. Yeah. Right. But, well, that means that no matter what, you got to do it somewhere. Right, right. So right, it's not right. where possible. And, you know, I think the language could be recommended. It's not a, it's not, um, it doesn't have to be hard and fast. Lisa, did I give you a copy of this preserving trees on a development site? No. I'll make a copy okay. for you. It's really, right. a, it's really a nice document about how to keep trees safe. <laughs> Right. So, want to make a motion? Well, actually, there's one last thing. Tom. All right. Okay, Tom. Well, and it's because of you. I was having a conversation with Ron. In this situation, because you. He was dropping off some tomatoes, and I mentioned to him that the conservation commissions had a right under the original law, um, um, Chapter 48C, to. Um, take conservation land by eminent domain if they feel it's it's necessary and he didn't realize this so um i i went through chapter 40 which you know it's kind of before the wetlands protection act and such and i made i, I did an abstract of the powers given to the commission and i think you'd find them interesting because we don't use them very often <laughs> if, if at all and so I, I made up copies, and everybody can have a copy. Thank you. And uh, I think you'd be surprised at some of them. One of them, which is pertinent to Gould Meadows, is uh, we have the power to coordinate the activities of unofficial bodies involved in conservation. So that's a useful power to have and to be aware of. But anyway, I thought you'd all kind of get a kick out of it. And uh, There are a couple pieces of property that I would get. That, that one there. At the top of Housatonic. Right. Well, that one out near uh, Lily Pond that we right. the one that Patrick keeps talking about that right. is owned by the town. Yeah, I, I think especially, and you could talk about this with the uh, with um, everybody get one because it's twelve acres, as I remember. Yeah, um, it is twelve acres of property, yeah. and um, it's so important for the watershed of the bowl. You know, I think if you could target. Land, but you know, you, we can also just buy it if it's for sale. And uh, but anyway, it's all down here, and it's all spelled out. It's it's under. This is the same law that comes into play for protecting Gould Meadow too. This is um, what we. It's under Chapter Forty, Section Eight C. But there's a lot of. This is like I say. This is before the Wetlands Protection Act or the Riverfront Protection Act. This was the original 
law that set up conservation commissions. So there were a lot of powers for just doing conservation work in a given town, and I, I thought it might be interesting. Oh, that is very interesting. You know, kind of broaden our outlook. Does the town have a yeah, oh, conservation? Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Does the town number twelve is the commission can establish a town conservation? Fund. Actually, actually, we have, we have one. one. Yes, that's the one that Ron has. The one that we found. Yeah. That is so a town Mary conservation Flynn. fund. And there's money so, in it. Yeah, a thousand. I think we've borrowed from it a couple times. Yep. For grant monies, which kind of paid back. Mm -hmm. We needed a quarter of the money for a grant. We needed by a special time. We borrowed from there. Got the grant, received the grant, got the monies from, uh, maybe it was probably the town. I mean, the development rights. Any really preservation funds, but maybe not. Right, Can we, we put the money back for uh, Gary? Like, yes, that's true. That's, that's, what they, that's when they bought the um, conservation restrictions for Gary Johnson's parents' property. Mm -hmm. That was all that came out of that fund. Oh. That was back in the 80s. That's the only time it was touched be between um, when it was set up, I think, in 1979. And yeah, Mary, Mary Flynn left us $5,000. Yeah, that might have gone in there too. But so, what, how much money is in the town conservation? What, what's in there now, Ron? Do you know? It was over $20,000. Yeah, yeah. It was like 28000 doesn't that include the fees from people and stuff like that? No, that's a, that's a totally separate. Totally separate. Yeah. totally separate. And if the town wants to make an appropriation, Madam Selectman, um, then we can increase I'll put it. Put it on my list. Put that oh, on your list. It, it, I mean, I think it'd be good to publicize it because there may be people that want to. Oh, donate. sure, who would like to donate to it. It one. would be tax deductible, I'm sure. We could put it on the bulletin board. Or put it in. You know, but anyway, that, that's why I printed this out, because so many of these things, you know, there's so much business. I, if you look in the town reports, they used to list every hearing that we had in the 80s. You, you would remember this, right? And I was, no, I wasn't there. Yes, you oh. were. I have two thousand. Nice try. Nice <laughs> try. But anyway. Um, you know, the, the commission used to handle like, you know, four or five hearings a year. Start kicking. I mean, that was, yeah. that was everything, <laughs> four or five years. And uh, because a lot of the laws haven't passed yet. And um, and the other ones were fairly new and they weren't really, you yeah, know, we went from active. We went from one file cabinet drawer that holds from 1978 to 1994 or something like that. <laughs> right. And exploded, then, and then from then from then on, you have we have the river fire file for the drawer that's stuck for years, for yeah. one year. Yeah, sure. So it's, I mean, there there have been times where I've seen us have as many hearings in one night than you would find in the yeah, town yeah. report for like 1983 or 84. Well, Mark Stenson once said to us that um, that for a town of our size, yeah. we have more filings than any other town. Well, two meetings a month. Yeah, two full meetings a month. Yeah, and we used to have one meeting a month, and we'd yeah. be here till eleven o'clock. Mm -hmm. And what, what, so we changed that. Right there, in time. just one. One, and we were out by eight. Yeah, I know. I went to one of them one time. How'd you do that? Um, were you, were you that were very, organized? Yeah, they were very. You, you, you didn't get off topic. You just. You well, just we do that here all the time. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> We're, we're a lot funner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I was looking for a motion. Before, oh, yeah. I'll make a motion. I, oh, all right. I'll second. I'll make a motion. Second. Make a motion. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.